digital is oh man i'm gonna get in trouble for saying this Uh-oh. like <laughs> like digital digital's better like fuji G, uh, gfx 50r which is what yeah. i shoot with and bear in mind there's a 100 version of that like <laughs> the the image quality and the clarity and the sharpness and the dynamic range is unrivaled yeah. like the quality is pristine it's perfect it's yep. so good yo what is good welcome back to the channel today we are talking to thomas heaton about why he shoots film this is an excerpt from the new classic film podcast so i highly recommend you click on the link down below go listen to the entire episode and i'm going to show you some snippets of thomas's videos as well with some cards above so go and check out his videos as well and go support him all right y'all enjoy um do you carry backups ever so in that for example you went out to shoot with that camera would you also take the same image on a digital camera just in case? Oh, no. Obviously, it's different. No, no, no. <laughs> never. <laughs> I, made, I made a vow that I would never compare digital and film. And what's the point, man? What's the point in doing a backup? Unless I'm being paid a lot of yeah, money yeah. by, I don't know, uh, Ferrari or <laughs> whoever <laughs> wants to pay photographers these days um, to shoot something. Then why would you? Because then you'd just shoot digital. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I the only backup... That. The only the only backup I'd take is uh, um, I'll bracket, you know, I'll yeah, do an yeah. exposure one stop over or one stop under. Uh, I honestly can't see the point unless like, I don't know, unless something remarkable happened that was once in a lifetime, like an yeah. undersea volcano just started erupting and it was like, <laughs> oh, my God, then I would take backups. But, um, you know, unless it's something like that. No, no, I don't see the point. You've just got to have a bit of faith. I think ultimately the the thing is, if whether it's film or digital, if your image is terrible, your image is terrible. Like <laughs> first of all, you have to be a good photographer and get a good image. It doesn't matter how it was shot. You know, yeah. in an ideal world, if you shoot a fantastic film image, you can't really tell that it was shot on film, especially if you're looking at it on social media. Um, so first and foremost, you've got to be a good photographer. That is, you know, what's the point in carving? a table for your camper van if it then doesn't fit in your camper van <laughs> yep. way, right? so you've got to be a good photographer first you've got to enjoy photography so if you're if you're a film photographer and all of a sudden you can't afford to shoot that much film anymore god's sake man go and get a digital camera do not deny yourself the joy of photography just exactly. because of this weird ego trip that it has to be filmed now it has to be photography exactly and then use whatever tool you feel like on there sometimes i just want to go out and shoot with my xt4 just because i like the xt4 it's a fun camera to yeah. use <laughs> like it honestly doesn't matter um it, it really doesn't i'm lucky and fortunate in the fact that i have two or three different cameras film and digital mm-hmm. so i can pick and choose and there aren't really any consequences because at the end of the day i get a youtube video out of it and people enjoy that content and that's how i make a living yeah um so yeah i'm quite fortunate so if you're shooting for a hobby you know just yeah whatever man don't ever deny yourself photography because it's not film that's a that's a terrible mindset <laughs> it's just terrible but i think now considering the price of film has been increasing a bunch um, myself and, and definitely other people that I know are now starting to kind of remove this. Uh, there, there's always been this feeling of like film is like the best and that's the only thing we're going to do. And I feel like it's not practical and I feel like it puts a lot of pressure on people. So I'd love to hear from you. How do you, you know, how do you move between film and digital? Like, is there any particular reason why you shoot one versus the other? Or is it just, you know, whatever you feel like? Uh, it's, it's exactly whatever I feel like. Um, yeah, I'm in love with the romance of film photography, the analog feel. I think it keeps my photography skills sharp. Um, but, you know, f- digital is... Oh, man, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Uh-oh. Like, <laughs> like digi- it, digital's better. Like, Fuji G- uh, GFX 50R, which is what yeah. I shoot with. And bear in mind, there's a 100 version of that. Like, <laughs> the, the image quality and the clarity and the sharpness and the dynamic range is unrivaled like yeah. the quality is pristine it's perfect it's yep. so good anyone that's never had the joy of shooting with the gfx which is actually probably quite a lot of people because it's quite pricey although i got mine second hand very cheap so there are some deals out there but my point is those files are incredible um but film photography has a look to it and, it, and like i said before it it um it validates you as a photographer i think um you know it's uh, it's like true grit um with film so 
So for me, I'll just flip back and forth. Like I have different moods. Like sometimes I'll just get this idea in my head of a certain subject or a, a something I want to shoot on film for no other reason than I just yeah. want to. Um, and then other times I'll want to shoot film, but I need to upload a YouTube video and it takes me a week to get my film back and developed and scanned. So I'll just take a digital camera because it's instant and I can come home the same day, edit a YouTube video and upload it. So partially it's practical reasons and, uh, you know, other reasons are that it's, yeah, just whatever I feel like. Romance, I suppose. Um, but I think it's all about the love of photography. There's no practical reason for one. Real quick plug, if you want to cop some new classic Easy 400 film, go ahead and click on the link below to go check it out. I want you to think about right now, Big Bertha, as, as you call oh, her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do you kind of process that, that love-hate wrestling match with film? So the thing is with film, there's a lot that can go wrong. A lot that can go wrong. And you're not aware of it as well. You don't find out until weeks later when you get the film back. Um, so it has to keep you sharp as a photographer. Again, I enjoy that. It, it, it adds an element of enjoyment to a photo shoot. Um, also an element of, of risk. <laughs> but, you know, that is what it is. So, yeah, when I like shoot Big Bertha, for anyone that doesn't know, Big Bertha is my Fuji GX617 panoramic. So it's 6 by 17 um, yeah, man, I've had problems with that camera. I've had a sticky shutter and, and yeah. various other things. But for all all of the failures of me with that camera, because there are a lot of steps, you know, if you're coming straight from a Fuji GFX digital camera, yep. which turns on and everything, all the settings are saved and you can see everything on the back of the screen and you go into something that's 30 odd years old, like a GX617, and you've got to load the film and you've got to wind the film on and then you've got to add your center ND filter because of the heavy vignette. And then you're, everything's operated from the lens. So you've got to dial in your shutter speed. You've got to dial in your aperture on the lens, uh, so on and so forth. Obviously measure your exposure using a light meter and then it's a rangefinder camera. So you know, you've got to make <laughs> sure that, that your lens is, is clear. Um, you know, cause you, you could leave a lens cap on and not realize. <laughs> so, so that's, that's not impossible. Um, but yeah, there's many things that can go wrong and it, it does go wrong and that's how you learn. Exactly. But when it, when it all goes right, oh my God, there is, there honestly in photography, there is no better feeling than getting that film back from the lab, especially when it's positive film, but oh, any yeah. film really. And it's just spot on. It's exactly what you envisioned. It's correctly exposed, correctly focused. And the composition is, is, you know, on point, then that is a feeling that is worth all of the struggles. And I suppose over time, you become more proficient at it. And then ultimately, you're knocking it out of the park every single shoot, uh, well, in theory, although photography is never quite like that. Um, so yeah, the, the struggles are real, because there's a lot that can go wrong. But it's like learning to drive a car, or I have a van and a car, and mm -hmm. everything is opposite in those two vehicles. So when I get <laughs> out of my car, and then get into the van, all the switches are on the other side of the steering wheel. So I'm always, you know, putting my wipers on when I'm trying to indicate and so on and so forth. And it's the kind of the same thing when I go from digital to film and that's where the mistakes come in. Um, but ultimately um, when it all goes right, you forget about everything. Um, yeah. Like I had a shoot with my GX617 on the Isle of Harris uh, using some black and white Ilford uh, Delta 100 and a, yeah, yeah. an orange filter and oh my god those images they're unreal I've had one of them drum scanned and printed yeah. 1.5 meters wide oh wow. god so good I think that's um, the video I, I watched you shot um that's the one where you, you thought your ISO was incorrect on yeah the so that's the th yeah that's funny that one because it didn't actually make any mistakes it was the exactly. perfect photo shoot it's just whilst taking one image I accidentally knocked my light meter to ISO 16 but I don't have a memory of knocking it. So exactly. all of a sudden, all of a sudden doubt creeps in. I think to be a good film photographer, you need to be immune to doubt, yeah. basically. So, um, and I'm not, or I wasn't on that shoot. So I convinced that I'd shot the entire thing at ISO 16, <laughs> which I hadn't, um, obviously. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, if you want to listen to the whole episode, click on the link down below to check out the entire podcast chat with Thomas. It's a good one and you don't want to miss it. All right, to the next one. I'm out.